Today I'm going to be looking at these AR8 speakers again. I mean, it's been a couple of months, but the, the repair kit's finally turned up. So I'll have a look at what's in that. Uh, basically comes with a couple of these new surrounds. Look like they're made out of very similar stuff to the old ones, so they're certainly going to match nicely. And we've got some glue, and I think they're just to spread the glue. Cap for the glue. And our paperwork, this is a um, My Audio Addiction. So Audio Addiction Speaker Surround Kit. Uh, looks like it's saying if your speaker has a gasket over the surround. So that would be the bit that sits on top of these, which is this foam. This has only got the sort of foam. Some of them have a thick cardboard thing. This foam, I can just be able to scrape off with my fingernails. It's well and truly had it, and it looks like it's actually, uh, it's on a bit of double-sided tape here. Or something like that, some sort of tape. So that'll probably, you know, it's going to make a hell of a mess, but it's going to, yeah, that'll come off. So they're talking about that as the surround. That can be removed with a single edge razor blade or butter knife, so I think mine will probably tear off mostly. Uh, then you've got to clean off the old surround. Most will pull off with a little effort. Uh, make sure to remove all the old surround. New surround will not be here properly glued over an old deteriorated surround piece. So they might even just be talking about this actual surround itself, which is under here. So that's this next layer. There. Oh, yeah, it's very deteriorated. I can scrape that off with my fingernail a bit, but there is some uh, glue under there by the look of it. Yeah, some sort of rubbery. Yeah, it's actually you know, like a bit of a rubbery layer there, so whether that's glue or. Yeah, probably is glue by the look of it. Some sort of clear glue there. So obviously, all this has to be removed right back to bare metal. Uh, like they say, otherwise, it won't adhere properly uh, looks like they're saying remove the old surround it's a good idea to clean the cone dust cap and speaker basket surfaces so the basket's obviously the metal bit and then the cone and that's the dust cap the center all bit luckily it looks like with this kit we don't have to take that off which is a better idea I think uh, they're saying use a paintbrush dipped in alcohol and just clean the whole speaker cone because all this with it surround is uh, it's starting to peel off. Oh good, it comes off nice and easy at least. That's the old surround. It's leaving its glue behind but that's the actual surround itself. So that'll just peel off. But then we really want to remove this whatever's on the cut because that's cardboard basically and then there's some sort of black stuff left here which has a bit of the surround plus must be the actual glue. So t all that needs to come off as well. So they're saying a bit of alcohol like methylated spirits or IPA will or should get that off here, yeah, it's rather sticky horrible stuff so we'll have a look at that in a minute use a paintbrush dipped in alcohol and it says to check part of the cone with alcohol just to make sure it doesn't damage it though it shouldn't then we glue the surround to the speaker cone so obviously the new one once we've got this cleaned off then we'll be wanting to glue this little inner edge to the, to the original speaker cone. And it says don't glue the surround to the cone and the speaker at the same time. So in other words, get attached to this cone first. And then obviously worry about, going to have to make sure that rides pretty well. It's centering itself rather well, but if that gets off to one side you'll have problems. But as long as this new one's flat and this old cone's pretty flat, it should end up pretty where, well where it should be. Um, some of these kits they want you to cut the, the dust cover off, dust cap I should say, and then you put some sort of um, paper or plastic shims in between the, the voice coil uh, and the central part of the magnet, which is I think it's just a steel piece but there's a central bit there. So you've got to mess around doing that with this one. They're just saying basically glue it on and there's get this the, get it glued to the paper cone first and then start worrying about gluing it to the frame making sure that it's not scraping as you do so and that should be enough to get it right uh, so some speakers have a back attached um, surround some front this is a front one 
and there's something to put paper towels between the metal frame and the cone to push the cone out a bit so I assume here yeah, that we should poke something underneath to lift this up which is it's got a fair bit of range here so that yeah that'll definitely make it easier just screw up some paper towel I guess and shove it down there to lift that proud of the, the basket a bit and move paper towels once it dries obviously Use the glue spreaders provided, those icy pole sticks. To spread the glue on the inner edge of the speaker surround only. Make sure the surround is centered on the speaker and press it down gently onto the cone. Push down using one hand to put pressure on the top and the other hand on the other side of the cone to hold it. Or is this just for um blue paper towels? If you have surround that attached at the rear. Maybe that's just for that. Not sure. As the glue is drying, continue to press on the surround as needed to ensure that it attaches properly to the cone. And I think it doesn't matter whether it's upper or lower, inside, outside. Some of the more supple surrounds will stick to the cone quickly, and the stiffer surrounds, such as a double laminated Vegas, will take more time to stick to the cone. Continue to push down the surround in a circular pattern as the glue sets. This might take about 15 minutes, so you're going to have to keep pushing that down. Once that step is completed, allow the adhesive to dry for a few hours or overnight. So basically, I guess clean both speakers up, glue the two inner inner parts of the new surround to the cone, and then just leave it overnight. And then we can do the outer bit. This step is optional, though it's recommended speakers will want to keep their voice calls centered on the magnet without an audio signal connected to the speaker, but this step ensures the voice call stays, stays centered while you're working on the speaker. Touch the speaker to an audio source, such as a speaker output on your receiver or radio. You can play your favorite CD, blah, blah, blah. Should be less than one volt AC, DC. You can confirm this with a voltmeter, otherwise, if you can't confirm this with a voltmeter, otherwise, skip this step. Turn the volume up so that it's as lowest volume is audible to you. So I think when they say your audio source should be less than one volt AC and DC, they probably mean like it, particularly DC, you shouldn't have anything anyway, or very low. So it's probably just so it doesn't, because um, if there's DC coming this, it'll offset the speaker cone one way or the other and sort of it'll operate from a different position. So I assume that's what they mean by that. It, they don't want obviously the sound itself as an AC signal but you want a very low signal I guess just to, so you can hear it when the voice coil gets off center you'll hear the audio signal will become distorted you can hear, hear how the distortion sounds if you gently push one side of the speaker cone down slightly yeah because that'll start scraping against the, the magnet most likely the former when you're working on the surround make sure the audio st signal stays clear so you can actually run an audio signal into it as you attach it to the frame um, just to make sure it is going back properly you turn your audio signal on so it's just audible put glue on the frame side of the speaker surround and glue it to the speaker frame after you attach it make sure put glue on the frame side of the speaker surround that's going to make it a bit harder if that's already glued in place so I guess you could just sort of you're going to have to lift this up and put some glue on it I guess After you attach it, make sure the speaker is not sounding distorted. Push down the surround as needed to ensure. Probably, you're probably just going to have to push around, making sure all of it's completely bedded onto the, the metal basket there. Clean up the excess of adhesive with water. Let the glue over, dry overnight again before you use them. Yeah, if your speaker had a gasket over the surround, you now glue it back in place. But I won't be replacing this one because it's it's had its day. Well, I can't put the original one back on, but. Some of the speakers, like I say, have a cardboard thing you can just glue them back on. I mean, it's probably possible to buy a new one for this one, but whether I'll bother or not. And you're ready to enjoy your speakers. So, speaking, yeah, so they do sell this audioaddiction.com, myaudioaddiction.com. Have speaker gaskets, dust caps, individual surround, wire, etc, 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 cloth. Hmm, I might have a look at this speaker grill cloth. 
So before we've got the original speaker, old ceramic removed so the metal basket's completely cleaned off and everything around the rim of the, the paper cone. New surround installed, which is yeah, will be this just glued to the metal. And then they're showing up with a finished gasket. They've got a big thick gasket, so that would go back in over the top of this once it's in place. But like I say, mine's this old foam that's just it yeah, disintegrates as soon as I touch it, so it's only good for the rubbish bin that one. I might have a look at actually um, cleaning a bit of this off. And um, it looks like this is going to come off. God, it's putting rubbish everywhere. But we're going to need a vacuum cleaner for this job. Yeah, the foam's just destroying itself as soon as I move it. Probably shouldn't have done that on my bench, but anyway. Same. Tip the worst of that on the floor for now. I'll vacuum that up later. And yeah, obviously remove any old bits of the surround that have fallen down inside the speaker. And yeah, I might need the Stanley knife blade or something for scraping this glue off. Doesn't matter too much if you mark this metal underneath where you're going to glue the new bit, but just, I guess be careful not to scratch it. Where well, you can still see it though, most speakers the surround or gasket bit would go over that anyway. And in most speakers, are, or a lot of them, the, the speakers, well probably not in the commercial ones, I don't think, I think they normally do front mount them, but some of the old ones they used to screw the speaker in the back with the gasket facing up to the wood, so you wouldn't see any of it anyway. But I think yeah, a lot of the commercial speakers they'd screw them on the front like this so the gasket should technically be underneath yeah there is something under that they're actually on the back of the basket rather than the front so you often get commercial speakers that have got a gasket on the front here which is pointless because it's pointing outwards it's not actually it's meant to seal between the speaker and the cabinet yeah this is coming but slowly so that's the old glue Disappeared. And now my paper towel's disappeared. I'll just put it on the wheel, probably a bit of rag would be better. Yes, yeah, so there's a bit of glue on the outer bit here too from the. Oh, that actually peels off, that's from the surround part. I think that's, yeah, it's definitely something coming off on it, so it must be removing some of the residues there. There's also a bit around the inner bit here which isn't going to have to come off. But yeah, some people might be more fussy than others. I'm not too, too worried if that scrapes. I think it's got a bit of a tin or zinc coating on this. So it may scrape a little bit. If you're a perfectionist you probably I'll do this with something less brutal than a screwdriver or a knife or something. Probably a bit of scourer or something I think might be worth a try. I'll just grab a bit. Oh, These big thick kitchen type scourers but that would probably... Mm, it's not removing. Yeah, it's gets... Maybe some of it, but that might be a better option with some of it, but that other stuff doesn't seem to want to come off. It flakes off, but it won't. Yeah, some of it's flaky. Some of it's rubbery still. Yes, yeah, so that's putting a few marks if I do it with a screwdriver, which is not the best way. Leave a couple of marks behind. The scour is slowly taking it off. 
Yeah, giving it a nice shine as well. But anyway, I'll get into this and I guess I should have a look at. There's no point filming the whole whole thing. But let's see if we can put the alcohol on there. See if it makes any difference to loosening that up. Because basically, this is going to be a repeat process right the way around. I'll just give that a slight poke under there with that little screwdriver. Uh, it seems to be, at least the surround stuff's peeling off there. If I can just get that off, I can see what the hell's underneath it, but there's yeah, something sticky there. Yeah, this is going to be a bit more tricky to get off. I'm just squeezing that a bit with my fingernail. Definitely some goopy. I think it'll sort of rub off. There it is, I can kind of roll it upwards. And see that? You can actually see the texture that are these little dots all over this cardboard starting to come back up from under the glue. That's the best way to get it off or not. It is, you know, I've actually got it to the edge there. I'm getting the sticky stuff all over my hands. That's actually starting to take a little bit of the cardboard too with it, I think. So, keep the metho up to it to try and keep the glue sticky. But yeah, that's going to be a bit of a fiddly. I suggest using a paintbrush, that's probably not a very stiff. Actually, I've got a toothbrush. That's kind of getting it off. Quite a job, I think, trying to get that, all that glue off. Yeah, I think you almost need to scrape it off with your, thing, your thumbnail. It's very viscous on these ones. And just try not to damage the actual cardboard, but. It is coming slowly, so that's going to be quite a fiddly job, I think, taking all that off. Uh, the actual, yeah, there, there, yeah, the actual old surround, I can pretty much rub that off, but it's the glue underneath it is the problem. Now, actually, is that taking the cardboard off when I do that? It actually seems to roll off. It's probably taking a very fine amount of the cardboard off, but it's going to be a lot quicker. I can actually, yeah, it's got a little slight layer of cardboard on there, but I mean, just a very minimal one. So you can actually roll it up and and then peel it off. And yeah, it's just, I see the cardboard's a little bluer under there. But that'll all be covered up again, at least we know it's a good fresh, fresh surface. So if that goes rough, it is maybe even a little wider than the original one. So that's going to cover that anyway, so I think that might be the easiest method is to actually basically just roll this up in its dry state. And it's, yeah, it must be just over the edge of the, which makes sense when they put it on, it would have come over the edge of the cone a bit, but I think that's going to be a lot easier to just peel that up like that. 
again if you're a perfectionist you might want to try and soak it off or whatever but I think that was actually doing a worse job than just rolling it up and removing it and taking off the slightest layer of cardboard with it but like I say at least it's a fresh nice fresh layer of cardboard for the the glue new glue to stick to yeah this is this is not too bad at all yeah this is why it's often easier just to buy a new driver and replace it which I've done in these ones before but damn sight quicker and you know a lot of people don't really want to pay the labour for someone to go to all this work it's cheaper to buy a new driver and stick it in but it would be nice to get us out of these ARs going with the original drivers in them but yeah that's coming off reasonably well so it's just a matter of going around and I'm just putting a finger underneath and rolling it up with my thumb just dragging my thumb back up towards the finger and it's pulling the old surround and the glue under it off in one go basically there's one sort of and like I said it is taking a little bit of the cardboard but I don't know that you're not going to take some anyway however you get this off because the glue is bound to take a little bit with it you'd be very lucky to get the glue to separate completely from it that's giving a nice edge there and just a matter of keeping going around with this knife and removing the glue on the inner and any of the glue left most of it's come off on the outer to the outer, outer stuff's not so important if you're going to put a new gasket on there you could just glue over that I reckon like pull any flaky bits off but the stuff that's well stuck down because the gasket doesn't if it's just po poking forward like this it's just decorative so it's pretty unlikely to cause any problems of it peeling off or anything even with all the vibration of the speaker and stuff I doubt it would ever come off again as long as the old glue is you know, well and truly stuck down itself so it's just going to be a fiddly job of doing that continuing right around try not to damage the case of course don't touch that with anything and try not to touch the, the cone or you probably should really hold that down while I'm doing this but yeah however I do this it's going to leave some marks I think if I use anything metal again I might be able to get some of that to roll off Maybe a good soak with the alcohol or maybe, I'm not sure I'd want to be putting that sticky label remover stuff near a speaker, but you probably could if you're careful and just get a bit on a cotton bud or something and I do have some of that somewhere. Uh, Citro Clean. So it's worth a try on a cotton bud, I think, just to have a, put it where I want it and nowhere else. does leave a residue I think so it's going to have to be cleaned off I wouldn't use it on the technically it could probably get the glue off there but it would soak into the cardboard and leave a horrible smell if nothing else but it may well stop the new glue sticking so I wouldn't that's slowly removing it so again if you want to get a yeah that's dissolving that just taking quite a while about it but maybe if I put a bit on there soak it with that yeah, that's, that's gone that piece there, so it's just this bit around the, the back. But that's a good way to get this. Remove the glue off the outer part here where it's still going to be visible. At least I think it is. How wide are these? To be fair, these might actually... I'll try not to touch that citro stuff with that, but oh, these are going to come out quite a way anyway. 
that'll cover most of that but still if you want to keep this metal perfect then yes yeah, one of these um, citric what are they orange oil or something type cleaners might help get the worst but yeah I wouldn't use it on the paper but just on the metal should be fine and then just make sure you clean it right off because it stinks for starters and yeah like I say won't do the glue much the new glue much good so that'll all have to be removed but that might break up that glue alright and um, I'll finish this one off and we'll have a look at it when I glue glue the new one on okay I've got this speaker cone all cleaned off all the glue and old surround removed from around the actual paper cone and on the metal basket here so that's all cleaned up quite well I don't think I've got any glue left it has taken a little layer of cardboard off most of this cone but that should be fine so what's recommended to do now once everything's all dried out and everything is to get this new surround and basically coat this inner part with glue uh, just using some of these sticks and the glue supplied which is I think that's just like that silly Zackwood here stuff just that sort of wood glue um, they also recommend there's a little bit bent there but I think that'll be all right recommend getting a couple of paper towels and shoving them behind this to I assume lift the cone up so if we put it in this hole on the back and under there and then lift this up a bit yeah that's it trying not to bend the actual cone Try and keep it circular but just lift it up a bit. I think that's what they're trying to say to do. It's probably best to put it right down at the bottom and just push the cone up a bit. Yeah, and that's got it sitting up a bit higher than usual. Not sure if it helps that much, but then they're basically saying put the glue on and just press down, finger each side, one underneath and one on the top and just hold this down. I guess the other thing is we really want to get this centered on this ring on the outside silver bit of metal as much as possible just so that we know we've got it evenly on all sides so with the same gap all the way around should mean we're pretty right at lifting this cone up actually made that a bit harder to tell but that will certainly give us a fair idea it probably doesn't matter that much but I guess the closer the better it'll look better even if it doesn't make much difference once it's glued down yeah so just a white sort of glue here I'm not sure if it's easy it's just probably easy just to put these in get an amount of glue and don't want it too thick I guess go around this inner part but yeah pretty sure this is just a normal yeah, it definitely smells like normal wood glue. So I probably didn't really need a kit with that if they said what sort of glue to use. Just the, um, yeah, I've got some here somewhere, I forget what they call that stuff. I'll have to find the bottle of glue, but it's that standard white wood glue. Yeah, pretty sure that is that stuff. And it makes sense because we're gluing to paper, so i well, also gluing to metal, but mainly the paper at the moment. So I assume that's about the right amount of glue. At least this stuff dries clear. So it doesn't matter if it comes out the sides a little bit, I wouldn't think, but we don't want too much like that. Just want enough to make a good bit of contact. Without oozing out everywhere. And I think we've got to mess around with this for around 15 minutes or so, it should start drying. And just make sure every part of this is glued down properly and making good contact with the paper with the cone and you obviously don't want any great big blobs on there adding a bit of weight to the speaker 
potential imbalance, I guess. a bit clear, it's hard to tell how much you've actually got on there at times, but I think they should be plenty. I'll just thicken up a couple of those bits just to make sure. It's always a problem with doing something new, you're not quite sure how much glue to use. Until you sort of get the feel of these things. But let's make sure it's a pretty good white coating. Thick enough to go white right the way around, but not too thick. That will sort of spread out anyway. Once you compress it, the glue will fill any gaps and stuff. But just want to make sure I've got plenty on there. That looks pretty good. There, so I can reuse that later. Now, yeah. matter of getting this fairly centered, which is going to be a bit hard to estimate, but if I go by the silver in the frame, probably easier to actually look in the viewfinder on the camera and see how central I am, which is fairly close, I think. It's a matter of pushing that from underneath on the cone. Sends a bit of that oozing out. Oops, now I've got it all over the cone. And the actual paper towel's getting in the way a bit. That should probably be in a bit further. There, you can just hold the cone up from underneath. Yeah, that bit's lifting up a bit. and try and get this all pressed into contact. Someone else I think if that was down lower I would probably press it against the speaker better, but anyway. How's that looking on the frame? It's reasonably even, isn't it? Probably a little bit out over this side. So I'm guessing this is you want it stretched out enough and it'll, when it's circular it should fit the best yeah, that side seems to want to stick up for some reason I think there's a little bit of a bend in the thing out of the packet the surround so that little section I have to keep an eye on because it's trying to stick up, you can probably put a little bit of glue under if any bit doesn't quite go down put a bit of glue in after the rest of it's set but I think it'd be better to try and get it all all glued down properly from the start yeah, I don't know what I can do about that bit of glue on the cone there I'll just try and wipe a bit of it off with some paper towel or wipe it back into the it should go clear I think once it's but it might be a bit shiny, so I did mess that up a bit. Now I've got a bit on there, so this is what happens when you do something the first time. There's a few little things to learn. And yeah, there's a couple of bits. Not the end of the world, but some people are going to want to get this process perfect, I guess. Cosmetically as well as Mechanically. But you know that is the problem when the glue's on there and you press it down it is gonna run out the edges a bit. That seems to be sitting on there rather nicely. Except for just this one little bit sitting up over here but it's starting to go sticky that glue I think. Feels like it's pulling down a bit. And yeah, it's probably uh, all around us. 
fairly central. It's maybe a little bit out up this corner. Could probably push that out a little bit. So it must be close to where it originally was. Just got to be careful if you change anything, it'll probably lift other sections up and stretch it out of roundness. So it's probably not that critical, but I do want to get it pretty well where it should be. And there's plenty of room in there anyway around. A little bit of glue coming out the back there I can see. I can still pull that paper towel out afterwards, so that's no big deal. But yeah, most of that's sitting down fairly well. All the edges, bits are sticking up just ever so slightly. And just that one spot there likes to stick up for some reason. But yeah, I think that's all we've mainly got to do. Just keep pressing down on that until, preferably on a warmer day like it is today. I've been putting this off for a while because it's been so cold. Um, we could do it indoors obviously if it's warmed up indoors, but I'm doing it out in the garage. So I'm using the natural heating. The ambient temperature, so it's just a matter of just keep pressing this down. Make sure everything's down when the glue finally goes off and then I think you're meant to leave it at least a decent amount of time, preferably a whole... Uh, as the glue sets may take 15 minutes after this step is completed, allow the adhesive, adhesive to dry for a few hours or overnight. So I'll probably just leave this overnight. Um, I haven't done the other speaker yet, so while this one's, while I'm fiddling around with this in the background, just making sure everything's pushed down, I must start removing the surround from the other one, and then it's a matter of coming back and just yeah, coating the underside of this outer bit, flat section on the outside. Um, obviously removing that paper towel, I think we're meant to remove the paper towel once this is set a bit anyway. And it'll be just a matter of gluing this out a bit to the metal frame. And checking it with some music as we do it to make sure there's no distortion because the, the cone's basically scraping, or the uh, voice coil scraping on the magnet former down inside there. So, and that should be enough to get this one going again. Certainly looking a lot better than it did before. And like I say, hopefully that white glue should all go clear. So I'll, I'll finish this video on this one for now, and then we'll come back when I I glue this around uh, the outer side. I'll just put some music into it and see how that goes. And uh, if all that goes well, if that all goes well, we should have a a repaired speaker again. And I'll be able to test these things out and see what they sounded like with the original drivers in them. Because, uh, yeah, they should be quite a good little set of speakers. Where this bit keeps sitting up, I've actually just sat this screwdriver on there for now to... Probably not the most recommended way, but it's only a fairly light screwdriver. And obviously I don't want to bump it or anything, but just to hold that one bit down, the rest of it all seems to be seating down nicely. So I thought I'd just sit that on the one little piece that's sticking up, just while the glue sets a bit more. And um, I'll check that shortly, after another five minutes or so. Hopefully that's held that bit down. The rest of it seems to all be very good, so I'll try that for an idea. Now with the first speaker, I actually did a lot of the cleaning in the box, which probably wasn't the best idea. As long as you're careful not to to um, damage anything, then you should be fine, any of this final coating or anything. But um, ideally it does quite, make quite a bit of mess, so uh, there's already some of this surround you'll find has fallen down inside the box. So it also dumped quite a bit more rubbish in there, there's lots of surround in there. Um, but you can just pull this um, phone, this, uh, well it's not fiberglass, but that type of um, dampening material out and just clean it out, which I'm going to do anyway because there's a bit of dust and muck in them from being so old. But ideally you probably should actually remove the, the speaker from the case. Um, these aren't actually marked as to which is positive and negative, so I just put a bit of black on the terminal there and then pull the two terminals off oh, this one's a bit tight careful not to 
break the actual terminal on the speaker and there's a bit of a gasket on the back here just get that completely out of the way put it somewhere flat keep it safe so we'll clean that one out of the box see there's all this already just from doing that there's this stuff falling in there but you can just remove this there's a lot of dust and muck in there anyway from the age of the speaker all they've got in here is a there's no proper crossover in these things there's just a capacitor to block the low frequencies to the tweeter and that's basically that's all that's in there but you'll find there's a bit of yeah quite a bit of wood dust and stuff maybe just from the manufacturing process putting the screws in and stuff so it's worth emptying these out anyway um, just check everything looks all right in there I did check with the ESR meter the other capacitor and it was fine um, and then just give the, the um, dampening material just a good shake out shake any any bits of loose stuff off there dust and bits of speaker and it's around and then we can just poke that back in it's basically sort of folded over and try not to lose our terminals in the process um, you could replace the capacitor if you really want to <laughs> but um, they seem to be alright in these ones I think they're 5 microfarad bipolar capacitors um, but yeah, generally these they tend to last, and these speakers are right, these old capacitors. But you could upgrade them if you wanted to, and put some some new ones in, as some people like to do. But we'll get rid of that speaker box. Oops. It's attached to my ASR meter. But yeah, I'll put might put a bit of paper down this time too, because I'm doing it on my bench here. Or I could take it outside and just rip, tear that main bit off and remove these bits of um, surround here. Get rid of do all the messy stuff outside and then I can just scrape the glue off which isn't anywhere near as bad so I might go and take that outside and tear this outside surround bit off because this foam is just disintegrating and yeah then I'll just sit there and roll all this stuff back off like I did with the other one and then I don't have too much mess that way and then I can just uh, get a paintbrush and just wipe all the dust off this um, before I start gluing the new surround on with this second speaker the glue is a little bit stickier than the other one I'm finding it, I can actually peel it off it'll probably make a liar of me now but I can actually get it to yeah, it's not doing much there but it peel peeling it off sideways it'll actually it's leaving a bit behind there but it will tear off in strips at times well it did if you're sort of careful it's it can get a bit done at one. Here it goes. It's just the luck of the draw a bit whether it'll do it or not. And then it just tears. So, depending how viscous sort of the glue still is, if it's sort of gone powdery and it's not going to come off. This has got just enough stickiness and rubberiness in it to hold together to some degree before it tears. which is a bit better than trying to roll it all off to the edge of the speaker it's still a slow process but yeah like when it comes off like that that's so much easier so it depends on the glue and the condition of it in the other one the glue wasn't much better than the surround for condition but in this one I can actually peel it, peel it off in strips Just being careful it doesn't take too much cardboard with it. This is, you know, I don't think you're going to get any less than just a very thin layer of cardboard going with the glue. So that's come up quite well. Get that rubbish out of the middle. And I did try a bit of metho just on a, on a paintbrush. You can actually give the cane a bit of a clean. Just make sure there's no glue left and it gets rid of a bit of there. This already has like some water stains in it or something. But you can give the whole cone a bit of a clean. And it does get rid of some of the dust and stuff. It certainly brings up the dust cap a bit cleaner because this one's fairly dirty. Being careful not to press the dust cap in. But just gently go over it. It 
does clean up the cone a little bit better. The other one didn't come up perfect. You still see some of the what looks like a bit of water staining in there, but yeah, for an old speaker, I'm not too fussed about that. But it does clean them up a bit. We'll put a bit round to soak into this glue on the outside here won't hurt just to soak in a bit but I did end up using this this um orange base cleaner stuff and that was certainly just get that on the cotton bud just so you're only using a small amount but that was getting rid of some of this glue quite well other bits of this glue were actually a bit brittle and hard yeah like that it's more like a varnish you can kind of scrape it off but there is a risk with the screwdriver that you will scrape the metal work a bit even though a lot of this will be covered up again but yeah I don't know what this kind of seems to be different glues in different areas on these speakers so this would have yeah well that out a bit I guess would have been the the tape on that it was like a kind of sticky tape backing on that foam surround bit that was the bit that was like a seal on top of the actual speaker surround so that's probably what this glue is it remains of parts of it are rubbery other parts have gone brittle so that rubbery stuff I'll use the orange cleaner stuff on and yeah then there's this inner stuff which is part of the actual speaker surround itself a bit that deteriorated and you can sort of get under that it's more rubbery it's like a reddish color in this one and you can get some of that to peel off using a screwdriver or a knife definitely won't be seen in this area so it doesn't matter if it scrapes the metalwork a little bit but yeah that is coming off a bit at a time but I really got to push the screwdriver right along most of it because it tears and then it's a matter of scraping off um, I actually used a bit of scourer a bit of metho on a scourer and then I actually I think I used steel wool on a couple of bits just to to finish it off uh, just to really polish all that old glue off it probably doesn't need to be that perfect but you want to get at least sort of 95 to 98 percent or something of it off a few little patches probably don't matter but the better cleaner that metal is the better it will look and the better the new glue will stick to it so the more the better really so I'm just working around this one with a knife the glue's coming off fairly well scrape this main bit off it's coming off a bit easier than the other one for some reason so they even though they're the same pair of speakers there's quite a bit of difference between the two the other one was a bit more fiddly to get off yeah so this glue seems to change between this clear rubbery stuff to this reddish stuff on one side both of them are like that so I'm not sure why that is that that goes more brittle that reddish colored stuff it's just a matter of scraping out the, the main bit and then we can come on this inside bit here just to take the bit that goes around the corner off should come off with a nice long strip and that's the bulk of it gone and try and work with the knife away from you not pointing towards you so if it slips or anything it's just going to slip off into the distance whereas if I'm scraping it towards me there's a chance that it slips off I'll cut myself so that gets rid of the vast bulk of it you'll find lots of glue down underneath the cone so just go around with a brush blow some of it out and just brush any other bits out from under there, we don't want any of that rubbish left behind on the speaker and that's got the vast bulk of it out of there, I've still got a little bit of this other stuff around the edges so I'll put some of this orange for remover stuff on that and try and leave that soaking for a while to loosen that up and then yeah a bit of this, this green scourer and even like I say a bit of uh, get the worst of it off around the metal work there and you can always use a bit of steel wool or something like that as well which is a bit harsher on the metal but uh, there's only a very thin coating of tinning it's only on the outer bit here anyway I think this inner bit's uncoated or much less coated so there is a chance you'll wear through that a little bit or leave some fine scrape marks in it but the other one came up pretty good and this new surround covers most of it anyway 
but you still want to try and get as much of this old glue and back to bare metal as you can and especially in these outer bits because you're going to see that so I want this other horrible glue gone but that's quite rubbery so I'll use that orange cleaner stuff and I should get that off and then just put a bit on with the cotton bud and then you leave it a few minutes come back and you should be able to wipe it off with the cotton bud or maybe scrape it off a little bit but it should come off a lot easier then so I've got this second speaker prepared now everything cleaned off it uh, still a very small amount of glue on there but pretty much all of it's gone uh, looking a lot better than it was everything off the cone here so basically I'll get this other surround carefully get it out of the packet and repeat the process of putting the glue around and sticking this one onto the the inner cone part um, this other one's all dried up pretty well there is a little bit of the glue does uh, make it a little bit darker and it's a little bit shiny so uh, it's not ideal that it does get on the old cone uh, these are buying grills anyway <sighs> bit of foam or something there so it probably won't matter too much but um, it looks like you do have to be a little bit careful to not get the glue visible um, I wouldn't really call that a, a professional standard one, it's only the first one I've done but it's only for me so it doesn't matter too much but um, ideally you don't want to get that glue onto the old paper cone because it does, even though it is clear it does leave a bit of a shiny surface and and make it look a little bit off there so this one I might actually put it right round and then maybe just thin it a little bit on the outer edge so it doesn't come back out when I press it down so like most things you've got to do a couple of them to to learn how to do them and I've never bothered to do one of these before so it's a little bit of a lesson in how to do it so yeah I guess we'll just try and get a good coating of glue to start with and then like I say I, I did put a little bit more on that one to thicken it up a bit and maybe I shouldn't have put quite that much but I want it to get a good coating and then yeah like I say maybe I can sort of wipe it back and yeah, maybe just take a little ring of glue out around the edge there and that's another reason you've got to get it pretty centered where it's got to go because if you move it it's going to leave some glue showing That's not ideal either. A little bit on the back here. On the flexible part, we don't really want glue on that because it might stop it flexing as well as it should. Because this stuff does tend to dry like a sort of hard plastic if it's the normal wood glue. Probably a bit of an art to doing this, it's just a matter of doing a few of them I guess and getting the hang of how to do it. But if you're only doing it for yourself, not really much point paying a, a professional to do this. Um, you could at least clean the speakers up yourself, because that's probably the most boring and labour intensive part of the whole job. So if you get that done and get them prepped, it's a bit like you know getting the undercoat on a car and getting that all sanded and prepped and any dings and stuff taken out then you take it to a professional to do the paint job um, you know it saves you a lot of labor on the on the low skill part of the job so you could definitely do this yourself at least get them prepped it's not a big job it's just a matter of sitting there and removing all the old glue and stuff and there goes the native hen So yeah, there's no reason not to do that part yourself, and if you're worried about the, the final look of it, it might be best to take it to someone to glue it and centre it and everything who's done it a dozen times or a few dozen times and they know exactly what they're doing. So if I take that off and then use the other end of this stick, I might just 
thin that a little bit around the front edge there because it should the stuff behind it should push forward just so we don't get quite as much coming out oops I took it right off there that's not what I wanted So yeah, just thin it out around this very edge bit. I think we should have plenty of glue there. But just trying to avoid it coming out around the front. And it does look a little thin on the back part of this one, but I think because it, it starts drying it sort of goes clear but I think that might do, it's probably a, a better system I'll just wipe this stick off even though there is a spare one I still need to glue the outer side so I'll keep these icy pole sticks clean for now get that off my hands oops, glue's tipped over, that's no good and again try and get it as centered as possible you can sort of see where the old glue line was I think I got that pretty close it's just a matter of pressing it down yeah it's a lot neater than the last one I think it should be very little glue on the outside of anything all be hidden underneath here yeah, that's that's near spot on as far as centering goes so we push up the cone from behind I've put the paper towel in to lift this cone up a bit and of course there's bits of metal in the way so you can't press on every bit very well but and just be careful with the voice coil wires and stuff under there Yeah, I think that's a bit of a neater way. There's a little bit of glue here and there on the edge of the the new foam surround, but there's nothing on the actual cone. There'll be, you'll be able to see a little shiny bit under this new surround. But yeah, that's, that feels a lot better, that second one. I've got a bit more feel for it now. So I'll keep going around and just push that down as the glue sets you don't want any sort of gap under this the other one I did lean a screwdriver on it there was one little piece, I think it was just a bit bent in the post or whatever or well, the way it had been sitting since I opened it so I just set a screwdriver handle on that bit just to keep it down and it seems to have stuck down now when the glue finally set this probably needs to be let dry a little bit more but one side, that side's all down pretty well. It does seem to be lifting a bit over this side. Again, probably just due to the shape of this foam, the way it's been sitting in the packaging or whatever. But yeah, the rest of it seems to be pretty well pressed down. It's just this bit over here. So again, I can sit a screwdriver or something on it to save me having to keep an eye on it. I did have a little terminal block here. Yeah, perfect. I could just sit that there for the minute. But I do need to keep a bit of an eye on this. You can go about doing something else while you're waiting. But just make sure you check this every so often. And make sure it's all sitting down properly. It's just one more bit there, just sticking up a bit. I could probably do with something sat on it. So I'm not sure what I've got that'll do. How long is that pen? The old sharpie might even work. Just as something to sit on that little bit just to press it down a tad. The rest of it looks pretty damn good. But just over the next 10 minutes or so, just keep pushing this down. Uh, any bits that are rising up at all, and it should eventually all stay down and then maybe leave it just a little bit longer and then take the paper towel out and as with this other one it should just this is sitting down beautifully on the 
the metal work it sticks up a little bit that side but that's no big deal that's and that should still press up and down freely so that's why you really need your music playing or you need to be pressing up and down on this I mean it's already self-centered basically so as long as when I glue that it stays centered which it should if you basically get the glue right with no tension on it then that should just go up and down beautiful no scraping sounds or anything and that's actually going to look pretty good like that I think without any extra foam or anything any sort of seals or anything around it I mean it is only a 70 speaker so they're not that flash and it's actually got a silver band around the the tweeter so that should yeah should match it quite well there is a little bit of corrosion on these ones probably you know in an ideal world you'd maybe give that a spray paint a, a coat of silver paint or you could paint them black but um yeah I'm not too fussed I kind of like it leave it in the old retro look 70s stuff was a little bit crudely finished a lot of it anyway I mean, these might actually be early 80s or something but they've got that kind of 70s look and you know they certainly don't look as polished as the later stuff but um, they do certainly work well these speakers I was surprised how good they sound I actually could have got a pair of these years ago with the the surround gone in them and I just sort of looked at them and thought why would you want those old speakers um, let alone spending any money on putting new drivers in them I'm not sure if you could even get foam kits for them back then probably not but um, then when I fixed a pair for someone with a couple of new woofers in them and I, was, I was shocked how good they actually sounded so I've always regretted not getting those ones but um, well these ones only cost me ten dollars anyway so I got a pair eventually so we'll yeah keep going with this I'll just keep an eye on this over the next 10 minutes or so just keep pressing this down to make sure it's all down and like I say once the glue is finally set uh, I'll pull that paper towel back out and this is definitely a neater job than the other one which yeah has a bit shown but it's not the end of the world because there's a couple of stains and stuff on the cone like I say where water or something's a bit of moisture or condensation's got on it and there's a few other dark patches so not the end of the world and um, I did clean this other one as well with metho gave it quite a good soaking but it has cleaned some of the dust off it but there's still a couple of water type stains on this one as well so it's not going to be perfect but it should do the job okay now it's time to glue the the outer pieces on we've got our inner inner piece all glued down it's set overnight so it's basically around 24 hours since I glued this on originally probably a bit longer now and they all, that seems to have all stuck down nicely so I've got to do this outer piece onto the metal frame now they do recommend running music at a low volume and you should be able to hear any problem I really don't notice a lot if you turn this up a bit you can sort of notice it go a little bit different sort of goes more high pitch or something Yeah, it seems to be about the same amount of force each direction to make it even do that it's not really distorting or rattling like I would have expected but I think this is pretty well centered so I'm pretty safe to put some glue on this and just glue it down uh, I'm not sure if you should lift this up again or just peel this up a bit and put some glue on it work your way around I guess just lifting this lip up a bit and then just let it drop back into place but I'm not sure the audio is really going to be necessary on this you can certainly feel by hand there's quite a bit of room that's starting to scrape if you push it enough it certainly scrapes there seems to be plenty of gap there and the cone seems to be sitting down, sitting up straight so as long as you don't pull it to one side more than the other 
or pull it off center. Um, but these certainly the uh, stuff around the bottom of the cone seems to be pulling it right into the middle where it should be. It's obviously been sitting like that for years, or at least until the old foam went on the speaker, but I will give it a bit of a test once I get the glue back on and just make sure it does sound like it's going all right without any distortion. But I think we're pretty safe just to get our little stick out and start putting glue around the outside bit now. Uh, it's going to be a bit more difficult to do it evenly I think, or maybe not, it's not too bad to do. I'm basically just put that around this inside lip sort of thing, inside flat, and just get it similar to what I did on the other one. And just try and get an even coating I guess and then we'll push it down onto the metal it probably doesn't matter so much here if a little bit oozes out from underneath it's not going to be as obvious as on the cone itself I don't think but I may be wrong about that but anyway I'll get this done around and then we'll have a look at it when it's ready to go okay so I've run the glue right around this one and just pushed it down just run my fingers right around and wiped off as a little bit of excess glue on the edges. I just cleaned it off with a bit of paper towel. You could use a bit of water as well, because this is water based. I think that's glue. Water clean up anyway. But just get rid of the worst bits on the actual metalwork there. And of course, just press the, the cone in evenly either side. There shouldn't be any scraping or anything. It should just feel nice and free. Uh, we'll hook the music back up. So even if I push that to one side a bit, no sign of distortion there, so that's a good sign. I think we're pretty well centered and pretty free. It's just a matter now of keeping an eye on this glue and just making sure nothing peels up as the glue sets, just keeping this all pressed down. I just noticed one little bit of that's just starting to stick up on the edge, so I might have to put a little bit of glue under that central bit. Yeah, it's just a little bit on the edge there, it hasn't quite hasn't quite set. Oh, the glue hasn't quite taken. Let's put a little bit on this screwdriver. Uh, might need another one to just lift that up very carefully. And just get a little bit under there. Yeah, it's actually using out, so that's a good sign. So I might have to see it sit a screwdriver on that one again. Just to hold that down while it dries, and we'll just keep this outside. Yeah, a little bit more is coming out on the edge here. As I'm pressing down. Which is a good sign the glue is spreading out nicely under there. So I'll just keep an eye on this and just check the sound. dust on there so I'll do the other one now and then I can keep an eye on both of them as they set and that way I'm not just sitting around doing nothing concentrating on one I might as well be getting the next one done and when as I'm doing the glue on that I'll just keep an eye on this one and this one should be starting to set a bit by the time I get the other one finished and then I'll test that one and we'll go from there and just need to keep an eye on them for maybe 15 minutes or more and then just come back maybe another five ten minutes after that and just double check this one's actually sitting up a bit higher yeah the cane seems to be sitting up a bit on one side or this this 
foam stuff is anyway so I might have to hold that one down a bit more or put a weight on it maybe that cone needs tipping slightly, I don't think so might even have to put a bit of weight on this one just to bring it down a bit I think that might be the best option with this one is I'll put something on it just to pull it down a bit just so all this foam surround naturally centres just being careful not to tip this one way or the other yeah it's probably just going to need a light bit of weight just to bring it down just so this glue starts taking then I can just keep it pressed down with my fingers once I put the glue on this second one it seems to have pulled itself down and into place anyway so just the suction of the glue I guess is enough to get this to sit down nicely so I'm just keeping it pressed down checking on my other one occasionally which doesn't seem to have lifted or anything and the music through this seems to be all right so probably shouldn't get it too loud I can push a bit on each side no sign of any problems and yeah when I push this up and down it's fine so I'm not push it too much because I want this glue to set and everything to stay in place and I've just wiped off any excess glue with a bit of paper and cotton bud so I think you can use a bit of water on this glue just to thin it out where you don't want it and remove it completely which is probably what I should have done on the cone of that other speaker where it got on the cone this all seems to be looking quite good And yeah, I'll just keep an eye on this other one. Make sure none of that's lifting up. Which it doesn't seem to be doing. And there's that other little bit that it lifted off. Seems to be staying down alright. Theory, I probably shouldn't have the screwdriver on here while I'm waiting for this other one to set, but I don't think it's moved anything. No, all, all sounding good let that set and then I can basically have to delete, let that set overnight I'll keep a bit more of an eye on it yet and when I'm happy that's not going anywhere I'll leave it, leave it to set overnight and then tomorrow I can put the speakers back in the boxes and see what they sound like so that should be the good part of the job I'll see how it goes then okay I've left these overnight and they both seem to have glued up really well um, feel really good, no scraping or anything foam seems to have glued itself really nicely all the way around so I think they're pretty successful by the look of it uh, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is these these bits of new surround, foam surrounds are coming out to where the screws have to go through, I'm a little bit worried when I drill the screw down through there that it's going to tear it a bit, I don't think it should matter too much of this stuff, but I'm going to just I'm not sure if it's recommended or not, but I'm just going to give these a little nick just down the side of the hole with a knife just so if the screw does sort of bite into that, it'll just hopefully it'll just rip that little piece out I just don't want it sort of pulling on the I'm not going to cut it right out, but just put a couple of nicks in it I don't think it should matter, but just to be sure, if the screw starts twisting, biting into that foam enough, I think it should tear before it does anything bad, but I'm just going to do that anyway, just out of caution. But yeah, these are feeling really good, so it's just a matter now of uh, getting our boxes, and I'm going to have to put one of these gaskets back. So it used to go that way. And a matter of plugging these back in. I guess while I've got this apart, I might as well have a quick look at the speaker itself. Got a square magnet, which is fairly novel. What does that say on there? SF, SFC8, I don't know if that's who made it or what, but be yeah, a square magnet's a bit different, though I'm sure the hole in it would be round, like a standard speaker, fuzzy round voice coil 
And about the only other thing that's gone on in here, which I probably should already focus that for that. One. Uh, it's just I assume that's some sort of part number, possibly a date code or something there, and made in the USA. So nothing overly special. I mean these quite old now. You can see this one's got a bit of what looks like corrosion on it. It's obviously had a bit of moisture affecting it on the cone. There's a few little sort of moisture marks that have been left there. But um, it's in pretty good condition, so I'm not going to complain about that. Um, I did mark one of these terminals with a, a black marker pen just so I knew which one was the negative. Obviously on the part that the terminal doesn't go on. They've got two terminals on each speaker and it was these side ones we connected to so obviously don't put the marker pin where you're going to put the connector back. Probably won't worry it too much but it might act as a bit of an insulator or something. So if we get this ceiling gasket about right and just a matter of dropping this back in. screws are going to cut into that new foam surround a bit. I might just start them with by hand. Oops. Should get my shorter screwdriver wherever that's gone. Rather than this great big long one. Yes, that is going to bite into the foam a little bit. Actually, one thing I probably should have done, these screws showing a bit of sign of in the actual heads down in the hole there's it's a little bit white so a little bit corroded or something um, you can just take these screws and spray paint them black again yeah, this probably wouldn't hurt actually be a bit of matte black or something but I have before when screws are a bit rusted or a bit corroded and you don't have any exact replacements you want or you want to keep the original ones just so you give them a quick skirt of spray paint and that gets rid of any corrosion on them I'll just ease those in with the battery drill you definitely don't want your bit to suddenly slip off or anything at this point and put a nice hole in your new surround so I try and just ease these in a bit like doing up a wheel on a car sort of go around and don't tighten anything completely until everything sort of centers itself in the hole and that seems pretty good don't want to do it too tight gasket sticking out but that's probably about normal anyway so there's one of them I probably should actually hook this up and try it out let's see what it actually sounds like now that's back in the box it should improve the base quite a bit over what it's like out of the box because it seemed a little bit down in the base uh, where are we? amplifier out On. Get some music going here. Need to fix my plug because it's intermittent. seems to be working well no rattles or anything like that in it so that one's pretty good I mean you could like I say put a new surround around this if you wanted to but that kind of suits like I say it's already got a silver bit around the tweeter yeah they didn't really put the gasket in real well under that one it's sticking out one side but uh, it sort of looks the part for this age of speaker anyway not sure these woofers are as good as the replacement ones were, but 
it still doesn't sound like it's too bad, going to be too bad a little shelf speaker. So we'll turn the amp off on that one. And I'll reassemble the other one. And uh, there are some grills here somewhere for these. Which are in amazingly good condition still. Because these badges are a bit silly because they move around. Looks like they just uh, sat in a hole drilled in the back of here, so they're probably going to hear yeah, it pulls out by the look of it. Yeah, there we go. So I guess that can go at the top or the bottom, depending on what you want to do. But it yeah, might be worth putting a bit of glue or something around that. And that's got a little bit of damage on it. And so technically, uh, a black marker pen will probably be enough to fix that for the moment. Which, you know, I'm sure the purists won't like, but just to get that looking a bit better. Obviously a bit of proper paint would be better, there's a little bit of a scratch in the corner. That'll do the job for now for me. And yeah, that ideally really wants gluing maybe just a little bit of silicon or something that will come out again just to hold it so it doesn't keep otherwise every time you touch these speakers or take the grill off the actual badge will rotate but anyway I'll get this other one assembled and then we'll give them a test run